Hello there. My name is Germán Ramírez, but you can call me German, like German chocolate. And today I will guide you to this video. Uh, today we're gonna work in some workshops uh, that will help us understand and learn more of all the tools that Patron can use. As we know, Patron is a preprocessor and postprocessor for finite element model analysis, which works by the hand of MSC Nastran, that is the solver. Uh, today we're gonna do one of the workshops of NAS 120 training that will help us learn more about this program. Uh, the one we're, we're going to do, to do is a workshop number five that is called Frame Surfaces Creation. Once finishing the workshop number five, we're, we're going to pass to workshop number six that it works by the hand because it works, it uses the same model. In workshop number five, we're going to mo we're going to model uh, the, the structure and on workshop number six, we're going to mesh it. So to start, So to start, uh, what is great a great recommendation uh, is to make one one of the folders with the name that you're gonna name your database. In this case, uh, I put my in the one of the fo in the folder I name it frame surface. Uh, I'm gonna open it, and inside uh, there's a uh, I I copied the file. That the workshop workshop by default gives us this file we're gonna use it later so don't worry about it right now uh, one big uh, recommendation of my part is that you copy uh, the pattern shortcut inside your file uh, this is so we it will be easier for us later because pattern generates a lot of files and this file sometimes uh, they will go to 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 folders very very deep in our hard drive or in different parts of program files. But in this way, uh, all the all the, we we make pattern save all the all the programs inside this folder. All the all the all the files is gonna generate of all this workshop is gonna go inside this folder thanks to copying it so it's a great great recommendation and inside of it uh, you open the pattern inside the folder so let's get started run pattern and wait for it to open Well, once it opens, we're gonna go to menu, file, and new to create a new database. Well, the database, we're gonna make it um, inside the folder that we previously made, that I made it inside my desktop frame surface, and I'm, and I'm gonna name it uh, by recommendation the same way the folder is named. Another tip um, is that pattern um, doesn't work well with spaces in the names uh, this is because it gets a little bit confused of, of the other commands uh, inside that works pattern with uh, in this case to make it better and doesn't have a, an error um, it is highly recommended that, in, that you avoid putting spaces and in and in, in and instead of using spaces, you use underscores to separate words. So once we have our, our file name, we press OK. The database is going to generate in the folder we made. You go in tolerance, we go by default. And the analysis code, you make sure it says MSC Nastran. And the, the analysis type is going to be structural for this workshop. So we press OK. And by first instance, what we're going to do is wanna, we're going to start making our model. 
To make our model, we're gonna start by the, by the geometry. You go to the geometry tab, and here create. You you make sure the action says create. After that, you go to surface, and we're gonna make it by the method of X Y Z. Okay, so to make our uh, the vector, um, this is going to be. 24 in the x direction, uh, in the y direction is going to be 10, and in the c direction is going to be 0. As you can see, the uh, the directions are separated by the space, and here is the magnitude we're going to have in the in that direction. This is for x, I'm um, sorry, this is for x direction, this is for y direction, and this is for C direction. Uh, you click on apply. And there we go. We have our first geometry. Okay, next thing is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna live and create surface, but now method we're gonna make an extrusion. To make an extrusion, uh, you click on extrude as you saw, and the translation vector. Is gonna be the extrude is gonna be in the C direction. So we're gonna have zero in the X, zero in the Y, and here is gonna be of two. No recommendation. Uh, sometimes is is better to take off the auto execute. Depends of how how um, um, confident you feel with yourself. Uh, this is because um, auto execute uh, makes the command without uh, without you needing to click on apply this help helps you in a way that makes you like save time maybe but the bad thing is like as you may know uh, pattern on doesn't uh, doesn't save auto save quick uh, a lot of times or making it making it impossible to undo various steps so the pattern the only tool it gives you for undoing is with just one step so it's if you make a, a mistake if you make two mistakes you can maybe undo one but the other mistake is gonna stay there so maybe you're gonna have to be forced to start all over again and that and we don't want that so uh, 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 al along this workshop sometimes I'm gonna turn auto execute off sometimes I'm gonna turn it on uh, depends of, of, of what it helps me most, but um, how you feel confident is if you press auto execute uh, on or off all the time. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm gonna turn it off, and on the curve list, I'm gonna select the top surface, uh, well, the top edge that is on the surface. Once it's selected, as you may see, uh, the curve list changes the surface 1.2. And I click on apply uh, to see it better what happened uh, to rotate the model you need to click the uh, scroll bottom once you click it uh, you leave it pressed and now you can drag your mouse you move your mouse and as you can see uh, you can the, the extrusion was made also you can have a different view, different views of your model by going on home and here you can uh, on orientation you can view the different views uh, like this is from view this is in different planes on the top uh, this one's down on the right on the left uh, these ones are for isometric view uh, also another tool that will help us a lot is when you uh, press control you leave it the, the control key uh, press and then you move the scroll bottom like the one you use like the way you move, rotate the model but in that way you zoom in and zoom out by moving the the mouse upward or, or downward and also the other tool will help us is pressing the shift um, key you leave it pressed and now you move the you you click the the scroll button and you leave it pressed and you can move to the right or to the left. These are our, um, some tips that maybe will help you. So next, what we're going to do next is now that we generated 
uh, the one extrusion to one side, we're going to make it to the other side. So we're just going to change the translation vector now to the minus 2 in the C direction. And we click on apply. And as we saw, we make the other, uh, the other extrusion. Um, to know better uh, what surface, what number of surfaces we have, um, we're gonna click here on home miscellaneous, the label, uh, the label control icon, and after that we're gonna focus right now on surfaces. So we're gonna click here on surface, and as we can see, uh, the program let me know which surface has, uh, which which is the identity of each surface. So as we can see this is number one, number two, number three. So uh, next instance what we're gonna make is we're gonna make this uh, the same from the top but on the bottom but to learn another tool we're gonna make it instead of creating it we're gonna transform. Uh, we change the surface as we're working with surfaces uh, and this is gonna be translate. So in the translation vector we will put um, 0 in the x direction and minus 10 in the y direction. Uh, right now, because I, I, uh, I think it's comf uh, good for this moment, I'm gonna leave out execute on, but I will choose uh, the second surface and the third surface. So as you can see, we generated the other two <coughs> on the other side. Next thing we're going to do is we are going, uh, we're going now to make a copy of all of it, but on the right, set, on the right hand side. So to make this, we're going to stay here and transform uh, on surface translate. Uh, but we're going to change the vector. The vector is now going to be 0 in the y direction, uh, 0 in the c direction stays the same, and now we're going to have 24 in the x direction. Uh, we click on the surface list, I'm going to erase it, and I'm going to choose the whole model to copy everything to the right hand side. And as you can see, it generated the same with all the same surfaces and extrusions uh, right behind our, our original. Next thing we'll do, uh, we're gonna generate some points. To generate them, we change here to create. Uh, we're gonna change to point, and here we're gonna change to extract. Um, next thing we're gonna so to make some points, uh, we're gonna select once we select a create point and extract. Uh, we're gonna make a single point and surface, or we're gonna select the second option. Uh, and next to it, we're gonna change the parametric uh, position to instead of zero point five to zero point twenty five, uh, and also the parametric value stays the same. It stays at zero point five. So we're gonna make it on the first surface so we select on surface list we select this surface as you can see as, as auto execute was turned on it auto generated this point uh, next thing we're gonna make another point but in the in in surface number six so we, here we have 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 and now when we're gonna change it, this is gonna, I'm gonna erase it, and I'm gonna select surface number six. There we go. Now we have two of our points. Uh, next, I'm gonna change here to 0 0.75 in the parametric, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna change it in the parametric, parametric position to 0 0.75. Uh, and I'm gonna click apply since already the surface list was selected a surface uh, in the surface list once we click apply as you can see another point was generated here uh, 
uh, next thing uh, we're gonna also generate this for the sec the fourth point on the surface number one so we have a total of four points uh, we select surface number one and as you can see we generated another one without changing uh, the parametric position so as you saw uh, we generated four points though all of them with the parametric ba value of 0 0.5 and just changing the parametric position into surfaces so as you can see you you should have four points two in each surface well maybe you're asking why do we need these points well it is to make some circles and these points are gonna help us uh, will and they're gonna help us as being the center of our circumference so we're gonna change here and create we're gonna create a curve uh, after that we're gonna make a 2d circle by method so create curve to 2d circle uh, the input radius we're, we're gonna put is of 2.5 so we have a, di a diameter of 5 uh, and we're gonna make it we're just gonna select here on certain center point list uh, you're gonna erase it we're gonna take off auto execute uh, we select center point list and we're gonna make it in this point select apply you can see the first the first one was generated we erase and now we select the other point we select apply and there we go we have our two circles in our geometry so uh, we're gonna make it also for uh, well uh, this after this we're gonna need to well after this uh, we're gonna make we're gonna have to extend the parametric surfaces uh, so to make this we're gonna go to create we're gonna change it to edit after edit we select surfaces and we select extend uh, here we go extend so first in extend uh, in this part we're gonna select the fixed length icon that is this one as you can see you just leave your mouse in top of one of the options a little bit and after a while it's gonna give you uh, what type is this uh, so we're gonna select fixed length and we're gonna select edit all associated surfaces so once we have these two options we select the length to two and we're gonna here is really important that we we take off auto execute and we're gonna select the following edges we're gonna zoom a little bit uh, and uh, another trick to select a lot a lot of uh, uh, different elements in just a couple of clicks uh, you leave your shift uh, key pressed and you start to select uh, all your all your uh, uh, elements uh, one 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 error that I used to have a lot is that instead of the shift key I selected the control key uh, the difference is that when you select your control key uh, and then start clicking you start getting this stuff that every time you click uh, the the figure was changing this help us to select but sometimes you you don't know how to get rid of it and you just click and it continues to move uh, to get rid of it you just double click uh, okay now that now that we're gonna really select them uh, you have surface edge um, and we're gonna you press the shift key keep it pressed and start selecting these edges the edges of the left hand side the edges that form the the I um, letter I capital letter so now you select apply and there we go we extended our surface uh, next time we're gonna break um, the, the 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 geometry we we made so here it did uh, we leave it at surface but here instead of extend is gonna be the first option of break after that we're gonna we're gonna make sure it says curve and the delete original surfaces it's already turned on 
um, we take off auto execute and for our, for our own safety and we're gonna select on uh, the surface list we're gonna select this part right here uh, the surface we're gonna choose is surface number one once you select it uh, you go to break curve list and the curves we're gonna break um, is our the first circle you press the shift key and the second the second circle uh, then you're gonna click on apply and a uh, dialog box is gonna be our uh, appear and do you wish to delete the original surface we're gonna select yes after that since what we want um, is a hole is, is for this to be a hole so we gotta delete uh, this part of the surface since we already break it we can do that so we can go to instead of edit we change to delete uh, we go to curve and well no I'm sorry it's gonna be surface and after surface uh, you're gonna select on surface list and you're gonna choose 12 and 14 once you select it you click on apply and we, re we already deleted uh, the surfaces inside the inside the circle making it a hole uh, to get a clearer view of what we're doing or or, or how we're going uh, you can select in home you can select here in display uh, the smooth shaded view when you click on it you can see how your model going so as you can see we we it was done correctly we made two holes on our model and this is the way it should look like right now so to return working on it, um, I'm gonna select again wire, the wireframe, uh, the wireframe display, and I'm gonna select the eyes view. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, what we, what I now what I show you before uh, was a way to make some holes. Another way of doing it is a little bit more simpler. That it's a little bit more simple. I'm sorry. Uh, and you go to edit then you go to surface uh, then it's already in it and we're gonna go to add hole uh, we're gonna choose the radius the same as the other ones it was 2.5 and next we're gonna select the surface the surface we're gonna make it is on surface 6 we select on center point list and we're gonna choose the two points that are here to make two holes and there we go we created two holes after that uh, we're gonna transform some of the surfaces uh, well first of all if you want to see again you can change also to shaded view there you go you as you can see there are, the holes they are the same as this one so whichever method you prefer so we're gonna go back to the wireframe uh, view next to we're gonna transform the surfaces uh, we go here to transform after that uh, we make sure it's surface and it's translate uh, the translation vector uh, well in this case it says director and direction vector uh, it's, you make sure it's, it says 24 uh, 0 in the y direction 0 in the c direction and what we're gonna make in the repeat count instead of one is, is gonna be two uh, to make it correctly uh, we're gonna go we're gonna use one of these tools we're gonna go to preferences then to picking so when you pick uh, the surfaces you're, we're gonna uh, transform right now uh, in the best way we're gonna choose instead of enclose any we're gonna make sure that it says enclose any portion of an entity uh, once we make sure it's this one is our option um, we can choose close if we if you didn't have it in that option option uh, click it but once we close it uh, you're gonna leave out execute turn on you're gonna change this and you're gonna be very careful because we're gonna choose this part 
of, of the model you select this as a box and as you may see the your model gotta look like this with four um, equal or same uh, um, uh, structure like uh, as we made it um, so as you can see the model should look this way uh, for our next step uh, what we're going to do uh, to make it easier we're gonna go to uh, this tool the this tab of display we're gonna click it and we're gonna change here in the geometry once you get to the geometry what we're going to do um, is we're gonna increase the point size to make this as you can see this part says point size and is on number one we're gonna make it bigger we're gonna make it to number four when we got it we click on apply and as you may see now the points are visible so we can ha manipulate them better um, now we, we can click on cancel and after that we're gonna go to transform here in geometry transform uh, we're gonna change it to point and then we make sure it says translate once it's already day, there uh, we're gonna change here on uh, direction vector uh, we're gonna change it it's to 4 in that X direction and 0 on the other 2 uh, then we make sure it's a repeat count of 1 uh, and we're gonna change here the point list we're gonna take off out execute if we make something wrong uh, and we're gonna choose point 26 if we have the dot of which one is point 26 is this one up here when we select it as you may see uh, it was selected correctly if sometimes you don't know exactly um, which uh, wh which one is or you're having problem to select it uh, if you're following step by step sometimes you can uh, write here instead of uh, having the having to select it like manually you can write it down like point 26 and it would, the program will know which one you're talking about without having the necessity of of, of clicking on it so when you have point 26 we click on apply and as you may see another point was created because uh, as as we what we did was to translate uh, create well create a new one a new point uh, translating one of the one of one point that was already made so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna create a plane uh, using as reference one of the one the our new point uh, to make this we change here create we select here plane and we're gonna make it by three points this way um, we're, we're gonna turn off out execute and we're gonna choose a, this button uh, to have a clearer view I'm gonna zoom and I'm gonna move I'm sorry well point one is gonna be this one point 27 on point 2 is gonna be uh, this point that is point 49 and on this on the third point is gonna be this point that is point 30 so once we got the tree I'm gonna select apply and as you may see uh, we created a plane that is right here okay now what we're going to do uh, this plane is gonna help us a lot right now we're gonna change here and create we're gonna change to edit surface and we're gonna make a break to make a break um, we're gonna uh, the option we're gonna make it true is by the plane we made so we change curve to plane and on the surface list uh, right now I'm gonna turn off the out execute for our own safety and in surface list uh, we're gonna select this part 
of the model. Um, the, we're gonna select. We're gonna select this whole part. Um, let me show you. Let me back up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, wrong bottom. Let me back up a little bit. Uh, what we're gonna do? We select surface list, and it's gonna be this whole surface up to here. After a little bit, after the the whole. Once you select it, as you may see, you can verify if you select it correctly because it has to be two, uh, two points to five. It makes the this two to five and the space and the and surface number thirteen. So on uh, the break plane, plane list, uh, the one we're gonna choose is the plane we made. It is this one, and it's gonna be plane one. After that, you click on apply, or if uh, we're gonna select yes, yes for all, to delete the original surfaces. As you may have saw, or may have seen, sorry, um, by breaking it, we created, we separated these elements. Uh, you may see there's a diagonal here, like making a triangle on the top and on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is these parts we don't want them. So what I'm about to do, uh, we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete them. So here in delete and surface, uh, so we don't be that savage. We turn off auto execute uh, surface list. We're gonna start clicking the surfaces. Uh, you press the shift key. You left it pressed. We're gonna select the 24 and the 26. You can leave the the stop pressing the shift key. You can move uh, and by clicking this the scroll button. And we're gonna also select surface number 32, surface number 30, and surface number 28. So you may have seen we are gonna select all of this. We're gonna delete all of this. Once I click on apply, and as you may see, this is the, this turns black, but this means it's already deleted. To see it in a better way, uh, like to refresh the view, you can click on here on home defaults. Uh, this one refresh graphics, and as you may have seen, it, it uh, makes a refresh and let you see. And uh, as you may have seen, what we did uh, was to make like a like uh, some kind of fillet, um, a sharp fillet in a diagonal way. So this is how our, our, our model looks like uh, for us to see it better. Uh, I'm gonna turn here uh, the smooth shaded. And you may, you may see uh, the diagonal we made. This is the original part uh, like it used to be. And now you can see here that is in a diagonal way. Really cool, huh? So what we're going to do next is we're gonna make it better to see. Uh, sorry, wrong bottom. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press here um, fit view so everybody can see it. I am also gonna click here an ISO and you can see it better. Uh, now what we're gonna do in here in geometry we change to uh, to transform. We're gonna transform. We select surface. We select mirror because we're gonna make it the same in the other way. Um, when we're next on here, uh, to define the mirror plane normal, we're gonna select zero zero point one. Uh, we select here the offset of sixty. And make sure it's uh, the is the checkbox here is checked in reverse surface, and then uh, I'm gonna turn off auto execute and surface list. Uh, the surface list we're gonna choose is the one right here. So we're gonna select up to here, and as you may see, as you may look, uh, is uh, the surface is twenty five to thirty three in 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 intervals of two uh, we select apply 
and as you can see we created another one to make a whole of five um, like items but the, it resumes to a big bar that also has as you can see um, the same fillet that the, 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 the from the one we make that's the magic of, of mirror so there we go that's how it should look like pretty cool huh okay well um, it's like a sad news maybe but um, the program after we build this one what it makes us do to save us some time uh, in, in continue modeling it for it not to be very very long uh, he, it makes us close this program and open the model it already gave to us in the beginning the one I was talking to you that was already in the folder so like to keep it uh, like as memory we're gonna save it uh, we're gonna save and once you save we're gonna put close uh, and after this we're gonna open a new database on uh, the new database uh, it's pretty important we're gonna change its name uh, its name well it's gonna be uh, uh, I don't know why this created this the file name is gonna be surf like surface uh, underscore create part 2 uh, you can name it however you prefer but just remember don't put spaces uh, we're gonna choose ok we create a new database and uh, as before we're gonna leave um, as default the tolerance MSC Nestron is structural and okay now we have our new database in which we're gonna import the the part we made so we go to file we select import and in import we look for um, uh, the one that was created in, uh, in the in the file uh, you go to frame surface or whichever name you had on your file and here on model we're gonna change it to uh, IGES uh, once we change it there uh, we're gonna make sure it says to current group default group uh, we're gonna uncheck import to parasolid it's really important um, and we're gonna choose our file that is complete surfaces ig dot ig e igs uh, we're gonna click on apply and it's gonna appear in the seconds a window uh, this window uh, is the import summary window it is it tells us uh, what what is what we um, what we imported uh, the quantity, the entity type, etc., etc. And but we're gonna click here. Uh, well, the points and the surfaces, the trim surfaces, uh, how much, and we're gonna. Well, all of this is important, but we're gonna click OK. And as you may see, we imported a really cool um, model that is like the one we made. As you may see. Uh, what we created was one of the sites, one of the bars, well, n not bar, um, one of the uh -huh, one of the parts of the structure. Uh, as you remember, we made five, like in this one, but in here the program, the workshop, uh, the training. <coughs> I'm sorry, the training uh, makes us save the time of modeling all of this. Um, so once we have our model we are gonna change our default group name and by that we go um, we go here on group then we go on modify and as you may see uh, where we're the tar our target group is to modify is the default group uh, we're gonna select mm, we're gonna select our uh, rename after remain, uh, as you can see, uh, we select uh, the default group and we're gonna change it to. Oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna select it to all underscore surfaces. 
we select OK. After that, we select uh, Apply. Uh, I'm sorry, well, we selected uh, the OK here. And as you can see, uh, once we select it again, rename, we make sure that the default group actually changed to all surfaces. As you can see, we select again, OK. Uh, we select here OK and to make it better uh, well uh, I will select ISO 1 view and fit view so it gets a little bit closer so right now what we're now going to do is we're gonna mesh our model uh, to create a mesh what we're going to do is uh, we're first of all we're gonna make some groups uh, we modify the default group, but we're gonna um, create some groups. Uh, you go here on group, you put on create. After create, uh, we're gonna put the name of our first group. Our first group is gonna be called FEM or F E M underscore surfaces. And we're gonna check it at make current because it's the first one we're gonna work with. Uh, we select apply and then cancel. Okay, next, what we're going to do, we're gonna create a paper mesh for all surfaces. Uh, to make this, what we're going to do is we go to the meshing tab. Uh, on the meshing tab we're gonna select mesh when we select mesh we're gonna make sure it says on surface and we're gonna make sure it says element shape quad or quad um, la later on measure instead of iso mesh we're gonna select paver and topology makes sure it says quad 4 um, as you may ask is the, the quad 4 uh, is, the, is the amount of nodes that, uh, that our shape is going to have um, as, as we know quad is of four sides uh, like a square or a rectangle but um, in this case um, the quad uh, the quad four it has four nodes and the quad five it had five nodes quad eight eight nodes etc etc and goes on goes on the amount and this the number it says uh, after the word quad is the number of nodes is gonna have that shape of four sides uh, well we're gonna select on surface list and we're gonna select all surfaces all the surfaces right here so I'm gonna zoom a little bit out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna select everything well uh, once I selected everything um, the the original um, uh, workshop uh, instructions it tell me it tells me to change the global edge length to one but the problem is that because we have a, a student edition it doesn't let us completely uh, uh, make it by one because it exceeds the amount of, of, of meshing uh, elements that I can make so uh, for for the purpose of this tutorial and, and the limits I have we're gonna change the value to 2 uh, but if you're you have the complete license uh, you can leave it as one but right now we, since we have the student version we're gonna leave it we're gonna change it to 2 uh, after that once we change this one we're gonna select apply and let the magic work whoa as you can see our whole model is now meshed. You can see around how how the 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 elements create around the circles to analyze better. As you can see there's a difference between the parts of the top that are a little bit more um, um rectangle or square uh and around the circle how they adequate or make different uh different um, figures to get the best of the surfaces so after this 
what we're going to do um, we are gonna equivalence the notes to equivalence the notes we're gonna move through here we're gonna change here to equivalence uh, we're gonna select all and tolerance cube uh, we're gonna select the equivalence and tolerance of 0 0.005 uh, this one it says set on mine as the default uh, if, if it has another value in your program you can change it uh, and then we're gonna select apply you can see everything was thanks to equivalence was made better so after that what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna show the element free edges uh, this is for the case so we can see that everything's going well everything's going on very good so we're gonna change here to verify we're gonna select here elements and then boundaries uh, the display type is gonna be the free edges uh, and we just select apply and as you may see this is our the, the free edges of our of our model of our finite element model so next thing we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna verify the quads that the elements of the meshing was done correctly so we select here quad and the first thing the first test the first thing we're gonna look for is the aspect uh, on the aspect where we're gonna move here uh, we're gonna change the aspect ratio to 5 uh, it's already defined as 5 maybe in yours uh, yeah, it was different you can move it until it says 5 after that we're gonna move to the bottom and select apply uh, if this is what it appears in you in this dialog box you select ok and as you may see R, uh, we, we can verify the the quads in our in our program so this is how it will look like and now once we verify it we're gonna um, post one of our groups we go to group tab then we select post when we select post uh, we're gonna select all surfaces just we're gonna select apply and as you may see this is the original group we make of the of just the model without the fem okay and then we're gonna select cancel okay after this uh we're gonna select the loads uh we're gonna apply the loads in our uh in our in our model uh after, the first thing we're we're gonna do uh to have a better view we're gonna select here uh on home tab uh you select smooth shaded so we can have a better view and we're gonna zoom a little bit to the corner right here that is the corner on the top of the left uh, once you are here in this corner uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the load uh, to create it we go to loads and boundary conditions uh, we select force make sure it says create force and node up uh we're gonna the name we're gonna put to this load is gonna be dead underscore load um after this we're gonna input data the force that we're gonna make is gonna be a force that just acts on the y direction so it's gonna be uh zero it's gonna be 150 and it's gonna be in that y direction and it's gonna be zero in the c direction um, after that we select ok and we select application region um, we need to make sure that it says uh, geometry right here and we're gonna select our geometry entities uh, right here we select we're gonna select this point right here we select uh, geometry entities and we select this point and we're gonna also select the point right here this point so we select shift and we're gonna select this one so make sure it's point 3 and point 60 separated by the space we select add 
and we press OK. Once we have, since we already have our input data, our name, and our, our application region, we select Apply. And your model has to look this way, with, this for, with these forces acting on the points you selected. And there you go. As you may see, it says 0 0.50. This plus 02 is um like times 10 to the to the two to the two second power. Uh, that it will make like 150. This is another way of expressing a number. Um, after that, we're gonna move to the other side of our model. Uh, once we got uh, here what we're gonna do is create another dead load uh, we're gonna change the name we're gonna make it dead load number two and in input data we're gonna change it uh, it also this force the second dead load is gonna be also just in the y direction so the but the amount the magnitude is gonna be bigger it's of minus 960 just in the y direction uh, we select OK and we're going to select the application region. We make sure it's set up on geometry um, and then we're going to select the, the points in which it, this force is going to act. And it's the same as the other side. We select this point and this point. It's ter number 37 and number 80. We add them and we select OK. Since we have already put everything, we select apply. And as you can see, our force of 960 is already on the points where we wanted it to be. And the next thing, uh, after making sure it looks your figure as this one, uh, we're gonna make another for another another load. Uh, this is gonna be is gonna be the op. OP up static load. Uh, this one is gonna have a uh, different data, uh, different magnitude, and this one's gonna go uh, in this x direction zero, but in the y and on the c direction is gonna be minus a hundred. So um, when we select OK. And we select the application region. The application region is going to be on the same points that were selected before. That is going to be point thirty-seven. Oh, I'm sorry. And point eighty. We'll add them and select OK and put apply as you may have seen these forces are now um, <clears throat> got added to our previous force so the the magnitude changed by yeah, because the both of them sum and this is the 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 result of the addition of the two forces acting on the same point this is because both are uh, are acting the same uh, so now your your figure should look like the following. You can change uh, in home. You can change the, to make it in shaded view to make it look cooler, or if you prefer the other views, go ahead. Uh, uh, and one thing, one really cool thing that I want to show you that maybe you see them this way. You think that um, all of the forces are vertical, vertical. But remember that the last one, the up static load uh, we put also a force in the same direction uh, and you can see that it's not quite vertical this too uh, you can play here with the with the views uh, and in some views you're gonna watch that it's uh, that it looks like quite vertical but in others you're gonna look the opposite look here look is look like vertical vertical but here as you can see uh, this one right here is the first one we put that are completely vertical but as you may see it differs a little bit to the right uh, our force so you can watch it right here Ta -da! and well 
once you get th this perception uh, we can go back to the ISO view and we're gonna continue uh, right now what we're gonna make is that our we're gonna make it like the most we can to the reality uh, the most um, looking alike to to reality so to make this uh, we're gonna go back to loads uh, and boundary conditions and we're gonna make it on uh, right here we're gonna create object is gonna be instead of force is gonna be inertial uh, load after this is we make sure it says element uniform because it's gonna act uniformly in the whole model um, on the new set name is gonna be gravity uh, and we're gonna change an input data input data the the the, the translating acceleration is gonna be minus 386.4 the x direction is gonna be zero just in the y is we're gonna act and the c direction is gonna be zero because as we know uh, gravity just acts um, to the center of the earth so in this case if this is on the floor um, like uh, it's gonna act just in the y direction uh, as we have our directions established before or well by default uh, we're, I'm gonna select on OK and then I'm gonna select on apply okay perfect as you can see uh, we can see the how is how an arrow was created down here this tell us where the gravity is, is pointing um, after that what we're gonna make uh, we're gonna be make the 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 boundary conditions of the because uh, this part is gonna be fixed at different spots so to fix the model we're gonna make it here in displacement constraint uh, make sure that it happened real good that it happened how we wanted to uh, displacement nodal uh, this is gonna be standard and we're gonna have the new set name of fix base I select input data uh, the input data uh, we're gonna restrict it we don't have any translations in the in, in translation in any direction we don't we don't want it so uh, rotation we're we're gonna live it like that yeah we're just we're we're not gonna restrict it in the rotation but just in the translations uh, I select OK and we're gonna select an application region when we select an application region we make sure it says geometry here uh, and select the geometry entities uh, to make it better when we're choosing uh, and don't have a problem we're gonna select here the the point um, icon and once we have the point icon activated uh, we're gonna change the view to wireframe uh, this is wireframe uh, and then once we have the wireframe we're gonna select um, the parts where we want it to not move uh, if we consider like the part of the bottom like the floor oh I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry um, so as so we can fix um, our, our our structure like to the ground uh, where we're gonna select the geometries is gonna be the points the uh, right here the points of the bottom that are in the contact with the floor so it's gonna be right in the part where eyes meet Also, gonna be uh, this side also. There we go, and as you can see, it's gonna be 0 0.90, 152, and 98. We select Add, we select OK, and we click on Apply. As you can see, our constraint is make so there will be no translation permitted in, in neither of these points so after this 
what we're going to do. Uh, we select again that ISO one view. Oh well, it's already selected, but to fix it, I'm sorry. We select fit view, so we can so we can see it better. Um, and we're gonna change here on display. We select the loads, uh, and boundary condition elements, uh, etc. And right here, what we're gonna do is unselect the show. Um, the loads boundary conditions element properties values so we can uh, manipulate the model and work better so once we unselect uh, we s click on apply and as you may see like the values disappear we select now cancel once we select cancel um, we will go uh, and see that your that your model looks this way uh, once you make sure that it continues to look this way, uh, we're going to go to defining our material. To define our material is a little bit simple. You go to properties and you go to isotropic. Once you go there, we're going to select the material name. We're going to put aluminum. Once we put aluminum right here, um, you could put aluminum or aluminium, whichever you prefer. Uh, I actually prefer aluminium. Uh, as you know, uh, whichever is is okay to the to the to the English language. Uh, whichever of it is written correctly. Um, well, after this, we're gonna put input input properties in the properties for our for aluminium. As we know, is the elastic modulus is of 10 to uh, 10 uh, to the sixth power uh, when we well well elevate it well it's actually um, the e stands for uh, the the number before is multiplied by 10 to the next number power to the m power like in this case uh, the elastic modulus is 10 to uh, times 10 to the six so in that case it's gonna be 10 million so uh, that's what it helps us to put the E because we can put like a lot of zeros like one two three one two three and it's 10 million but it looks like a little bit uh, hard to identify when even more when it's a lot of of of, um, of zeros but in this case uh, to make it simple we have 10 uh, E6 the Poisson ratio is going to be 0 0.3 and the density where it's going to be 2.61 e minus 4 we select ok and we select apply and as you can see here are now it now appears of existing materials also another tip uh, that I'm sorry I haven't mentioned before whenever you make an action here uh, on this box right right at the bottom it says uh, what 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 commands you're making as you can see these are a lot of, of for all, all of our commands and as you saw right now that I created a material it appeared uh, the last command it says material create uh, I'm sorry uh, it moved a little bit to the top oh well well, uh, it doesn't let me anymore uh, see it, but it said that uh, there was a material created. Uh, this It changed because I changed the viewport, etc. Uh, as I said before, it it's changes of the last thing you did. So, uh, now that we created the, 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 our material, what we're gonna, we're, we're gonna do is to assign it to the whole to the whole surface to do so uh, we're gonna do properties of the way we're gonna make these properties is gonna be in 2d uh, it's gonna be in 2d because as we know um, it's a really thin material and it has like the same cross section across its uh, body so we're gonna change here on properties uh, we're gonna change here on create uh, and it's gonna be um, 2D, orthotropic, and 
it's gonna be a uh, um, it's gonna be shell um, well maybe here is a little bit difficult we can move through here um, properties to the properties we can select shell and once we select shell what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, name it the property set name it's gonna be I'm gonna name it all frame underscore um, flange I'm gonna change this all to to underscore also uh, once we have it this way we're gonna select input properties and in material names we're gonna select here mat prop name it doesn't look like a button but it's a button you select it and it appears all the materials you have uh, created in this case uh, we select aluminium and once we select aluminium uh, we change the thickness the thickness is we're gonna give it to it and it's gonna be 0 0.75 once we select it we select OK and after that we're gonna um, apply to it uh, um, the uh, of, of which uh, application region are we gonna put it into uh, but um, the whole structure the whole model is of aluminium but the flanges are of different thickness than the, the the part of the center so um, in this case we need to make uh, two different two deep two different shells um, so in that case in the application region instead of selecting the whole the structure uh, we're just gonna select the flange uh, the flanges and to this to do so uh, to doesn't make like a big mistakes or error we're gonna change um, here on uh, to make it easier to choosing we're gonna choose here on home and we're gonna select the front view okay now that we have the front view we're gonna on preferences we're gonna change picking again uh, on picking we're gonna what we're gonna choose for our better uh, uh, of, of using a better tool we're gonna put and close entire entity. Once we select, once we selected, we select close, and on select members, we're gonna select the top and bottom flange. So we're just gonna be careful to select just the top. You can see. There we go. We selected the part of the top. I press shift, and select the part of the bottom. I'm sorry. Uh, we just gotta be a little, very, very careful. There we go. We selected the two flanges, the one on the top and the one on the bottom. We select add and press OK. And there we go. Uh, we're ready to apply to it. And as we can see, it, it's already created the, the aluminum frame for the flange. Uh, and now what we're going to create is the, uh, the property for the part of the center. Uh, first of all, what we're gonna change is we we're, we're gonna take off the the preference we selected of picking. We're gonna return it to any portion of entity. We select close, uh, and the property set name is now gonna be the web. Instead of flange, it's gonna be web. Uh, and now on input properties, uh, we make sure that aluminum stays the same. If not, you can select it again. Uh, and thickness instead of 0 0.75 is going to be of 0 0.5 like okay and for application region we select it uh, and we uh, we put it in the part of select members and we are going to select the web surfaces that is between the flanges uh, is the part that has the trim surfaces with hole so we select select members and we're going to select this part and once we cover it all we select it add and press ok once we got it we select apply and as you may have seen we created both boot shells the all frame for flange and the all frame for web now we almost got everything but we'll still what we're gonna do uh, 
we're gonna we're gonna make sure that in the sub case uh, or the load cases that we have uh, everything is all right so to make sure we're gonna go to load cases uh, we're gonna select modify and as we can see the existing load cases is the default uh, we select it and make sure that everything that we have done is right there is the fixed base uh, the displacement the dead loads the obstatic load and the gravity so everything is all right everything is perfect so we put OK and uh, once we once we got it there we we can get out of it so um, after that what we're gonna do uh, we're gonna post the fem surfaces now so we go to group post and what we're gonna select now is the fem surfaces and we click on apply and cancel as you can see now our fem is the one that is is, is just uh, posted uh, so everybody can see it better uh, ISO mesh and fit view here we go we have it better uh, so right now what we're gonna do we're just now we're in the in the last part uh, uh, Every, now that the mesh is made, that the properties, and the boundaries, and everything, it's already made. Uh, we're ready to analyze it. Uh, that what we're that's that, and, and that is what we were trying to do since the beginning. The point we all we all of us wanted to reach. Uh, so for analyzing, we're gonna choose analyze tire model. Uh, we're gonna change this to an analysis deck. Um, well. The job name is gonna be the same as a, as the database. Um, next type, we're gonna make sure the solution type is set to linear static. Uh, we select OK. Um, in translation parameters, we're gonna click, and the card format we're gonna change it to small. And that's it. We select OK. And after that, we can run our analysis. We select apply. And there we go. We created our, uh, the, the program. She uh, took it to analyze everything that we made. Uh, all, of, all of our things. It created a file that the solver, the Nast MSC Nastron solver can read it. So to watch it, um, this is the, the folder uh, where it, everything was made, and as we as we can see, this is the this is the the file that the program made. Uh, it's a BDF. Uh, we can open it. Uh, I will open it on Notepad. Uh, just for this time, and right here. We can see everything that we make. Uh, we make. We can see uh, the P shell, the property we make, uh, and all the and all the sequats that were that go uh, by the by the P shell. As you can see, the identity uh, of this is number one. This P shell number one because we and this is the and this sequat is this property is following the properties of this shell. And this special and are all the C quads. Uh, here we can see the other P shell that has the identity of number two, and here we can see the C quads follow this P shell of different thickness. And there we go. We here also uh, we can see everything the material, uh, we can see the forces, etc., the nodal forces. Uh, the dead load when we see that everything is all right as we planted it on the pattern uh, we're ready to to solve it uh, to solve it we open MSC Nastern we double click it and uh, we go to the to the to the folder that we created uh, it was already there but to show you is desktop the frame surface and this is the BDF. We select open. We select run. And let the magic work.
uh, as you can see the PDF will start the the nestern I'm sorry uh, you you uh, input to it to the solver uh, PDF that was created by Patron and and nestern what it will do it will start to analyze it and solve it uh, and it will start creating uh, a couple of files a couple of files that will help us uh, view the results but for the moment uh, we leave it like that we leave it uh, the program to work by itself uh, until it finishes running how we know when it will finish running is when this uh, icon disappears and there we go we see that the icon disappeared and the final programs were created uh, if you remember we just have a few files and now we have a few more uh, it creates uh, the the, mo the most important it creates the XDB file that this one is gonna be the one that goes back into into the the pattern uh, program and or and 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 make and plan and plot the results but for us to uh, view uh, better what what it created is the f06 file uh, this one we can run it we can run it with op with notepad just for this time and as we can see uh, here we can see what it created uh, it, the displacements the forces the stresses and everything uh, one of the things that will help us a lot um, to look for in the f06 is to know if we if we had an error uh, the f06 will tell us and it will tell us in a fatal message so to know if it if we had a fatal we select control F uh, we press control F and we look for the word fa fatal my next oh well fatal I, I don't know the pronunciation sorry and it cannot find anything so that's really really good we can also look for warning if there's any warning and yeah we find the first one that is like uh, the, is the introductory but after that one we didn't find anything so that means that the rest of our of our of our solution was good so we're gonna close it and next we're gonna took that we're gonna open pattern again and we're gonna plot our results we select here xdb exit results select results fi file and service create part 2 the xdb uh, and once we put it in what we're gonna do is apply and there we go how do we know nothing happened you may think but we can see here that it says n attach result file so yeah it attached so we go to results and we're gonna start analyzing the results uh, the first thing we are gonna see is the deformation that our structure suffered so we select here in deformation uh, we make sure it's this one is selected the default a1 static sub case and what we're gonna the deformation result we want is gonna be displacements translational uh, once we select it uh, we're gonna select on the how is it called is display attributes this button we select here uh, and on model scale the scale factor we're gonna make sure is uh, this one here is 0 0.1 we're gonna select a 0 0.01 uh, once we change it we're gonna take off the show undeformed and after that we're gonna select apply and as you can see there was a displacement um, move it through here and how you can see it, it created a little bend uh, let me so we can see better I will select here the orientation from view and as you can see it's not anymore uh, a line uh, a line that a perfectly perpendicular line through here but through here is like a little bit of a curve so we can see it will it suffer a displacement translational so
After that, uh, we can see how how the bending occurred mostly on this side, on the right hand side, because here is where we had our biggest forces here and here. So after that, uh, where we're gonna, so we can see it better. Um, we're gonna select here on on display attributes uh, uh, again. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, and we're gonna click here instead of wireframe. We're gonna select shaded. And after that, we're gonna select apply. And we can see it better. And then, and then, there we go. We can see better the all the bending that occurs here. Where is the higher force? Also here, we can see the curve. So uh, that's the first deformation results. Now we can see the stress range results. To see it, we go back to results. We select fringe. Uh, after fringe, um, we select on this fringe result. We select until the, the bottom that is a stress tensor. We make sure that here in position says at C1. If it doesn't, we can click, uh, select C1, select close. Uh, we want the quantity to be on bond misses. Bond misses. Uh, after that, we select apply. As we can see, we can watch the stress tensor, uh, how it's greatly up, uh, applied on this side uh of the uh on the holes of the right this is like like uh like we remember uh this is the where where the higher forces so that's why the holes right here because it's the force uh nearby and there's uh a constraint here uh the holes it suffered the biggest um the biggest uh, uh of the stress tensor and we can see that the highest parts are right here are here here in different parts of our model but on both sides um, but on the, on the that are on the holes of the right hand side so yeah we, we can know that the highest value is 9.18 plus uh, well 9 918 uh, after that the figure should look like the following and to watch uh, different uh, we're gonna select uh, the graphics uh, to to watch the stress marker uh, we're gonna reset the graphics once we reset them uh, we're gonna create a marker uh, here we're gonna select a uh, marker and here is gonna be tensor so we can see the stress tensor uh, the directions and everything so we're gonna select here uh, position uh, we're gonna select C1 again if it's already uh, selected it's okay uh, then we're gonna uh, we're gonna go back to uh, here uh, we're gonna just select the XX and YY so we deselect the other ones uh, this one stays at component uh, we're gonna go back here to display attributes attributes um we're gonna uncheck um the show max min uh label and the show tensor label we uncheck this both uh we go back to plot options uh and let me uh, plot options uh and we're gonna leave it as is once we do that, we select apply, and voila! You can watch uh, the stress tensor markers, and it looks pretty cool, huh? You can go uh, zoom a little, a lot, and you can watch like um, in the C quads. Uh, uh, well, in the quads, uh, you can see like the directions of each of the uh, of the stress tensor. You can see that some go like um, like in tension. You can see that some go in compression, and it's pretty pretty cool. Once you go back, you can see it 
quite quite interesting uh, and next thing what we what we're going to do uh, we're gonna reset graphics we're gonna make a little bit experiment to know to verify something you will see uh, we reset graphics uh, I'm sorry well I'm gonna refer here and reset graphics uh, once we reset graphics uh, also in plot options here in plot options uh, you you you're gonna click on on the space right here uh, instead of the coordinate transformation being clicked as as is we're gonna change it to global and then we're gonna change apply and what difference do you see nothing right it looks pretty the same pretty pretty much the same so what we did um, uh, was to verify uh, the only difference between the plot, this plot and the previous one is that the coordinate transformation global was used to create this plot. Uh, this means the stress components are displayed in the MSC pattern global coordinate system. So yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, as we can see, uh, this uh, the it pretty much helped us uh, all these boat workshops to model to learn how to model uh, uh, a frame and also uh, how to mesh it how to mesh it and obtain uh, quite good results out of it um, so well uh, thank you very much for your time uh, your patience uh, hope you liked your video uh, please like uh, give us thumbs up and and share us so the knowledge uh, continue uh, let us know if you have any thought or suggestion and it was a pleasure thanks a lot have a very good day we're gonna close the program well we can save it first um, we can save it and we're gonna close it are you sure yes well thanks a lot that was everything for today have a very good day until next time